think and you so. hope that it's just going to work. And this is exactly the plan happening right now as Leo's the target. Immediately he cleanses to try and get himself out of the way, but he's burning down. Has to flash in the end as Lehens. He's just happy to help his minions out, trying to push this one forward. And it looks like Leo. No summoners, massive lead here. And Lehens is like not safe either, by the way. Yep, there's the flash from Carrier. Immediately they lock this one down, and Lehens just a little bit too far forward. Does have himself the uh, bottom block. Level so he one. is going to be all right. <laughs> Owner is up here. He does have the Rift Herald as well as that's a Nar into the wall. Keen may die also, and he will. Kind of tanking up the turret. Might actually now. have a team fight. Moonfall almost off cooldown here for Owner. Yeah. Leo's got his, but the Glacial Fissure goes completely wide, and that is going to be the Drake locked down. Owner goes golden, but is he actually going to survive? This is the question. Realm Walk comes in. Keen actually finds it. Off towards the backside, no flash, but no worries by the looks of things. Moonfall doesn't do enough damage there, as you can see Lehens getting thrown around. The heal does come out. The Yumi is dead now, though, as Leo at basically full health. Fly, gonna have to try and get out of there as Faker gets into the brush into relative safety as the flash out from Leo, but Gumiushi's trying to catch up to him. In the meantime, Keen's killing everyone else. Killed. Leo one misses out on all the gold, but that's fine. He might be in trouble here. Kana is going to be able to get that Nara up. Yeah, how do you navigate this? He's decided to invest his flash. Keen's like, ah, oh, nah, mate. I am not. <laughs> not <this laughs> He's looking for Goomba. Oh, Goomba in trouble towards the backside. He safeguards to get himself out. Uh, he's just kind of missing out on all their tiny windows of opportunity here, unfortunately. It's just too little too late to decide now is the time to look for a team fight. Dread dies so quickly if he goes in. Yeah, okay, Dread does walk forward, but doesn't take too much damage. Carrier flashing on top of Leo, misses the ult though, as there's the Realm Warp into the backline. Great kick out onto Owner, but they still manage to take down the Aphelios, and now there's so much damage missing from this fly fight. Fly is going to get a decent shockwave, but it's too little, and it is way too late. Faker flashes forward on top of Dread. He's going to go golden, so he can see his death for a moment. He's got a Yumi, so he might be able to zoom his way out of this one. And he'll be able to <laughs> do so. <laughs> from Lance, he's like, I'm helping! Yeah. Oh, this one I think has just, uh... It's, it's flown away from Afrika. There's yeah. no way back into this game. Well, Kane, get a dive on in. So Kerry is well and truly dead. Owner goes golden as, uh, yeah. Rise turns up, Faker decides that it is the end of the Afrika Freaks for this game, and they will take down these Nexus turrets. Leo, he's gonna respawn, but uh, I don't think you're allowed out of your fountain, and if you do, the Crab Raid will be upon you as T1 take down the first Nexus of the series. And, they and here we go, Dreads going topside. Yeah, we're looking to try and take down Kana, that Narbar extraordinarily low, as there's the dive on in. And okay, Keen just going to grab it, gets out of the way of the turret, doesn't. Yeah, gonna look for this one. And now they've brought even more support. Lehens comes down, they're gonna grab a plate. In the meantime, it's a decent hop as uh, all of the buttons get thrown out. There's the flash, rocket jump comes and forward. Look for something yeah. here. Walking on in, Carrier did move over, does have his flash available once again, is now Keen. Gonna have to try and. Yeah, gets the buster shot, kicks him away. Is Carrier gonna get flashed on by Dread? Oh no, did he hit the ward that one time? No, it doesn't even matter. It is going to be the kill as Fly flashes forward and picks up the kill on Guma Yushi. With a decent Narbar and then everything's good. Looks like Afrika, they've decided that they want to start fighting this one as Dread. He's going to get snared. Ulti comes through and Ona just flashes on top of him. Hook connects onto the volley there as Dread's going to flash away. The box does come down. Realm Warp going to be aborted here by Faker. And they are in a kind of an awkward spot, T1 are, because they can't actually get to the Drake easily now. Well, maybe they just don't care about it, as that's a huge Nara into the wall. That is the jungler, and T1, they might just well, uh, say yeah. it's time for Baron. That's a Baron opportunity right there. Hey, you can't get to the Drake, but if Dread's going to stand there and you have vision, that's been the biggest issue for Afrika in this moment, is just no vision. Whoa, that paddle stun damage was insane! All right, Fly. He's definitely, uh, definitely at his wee picks this morning. There's Arcana taking a lot of damage here from the Baron as the rest of T1, they're going to disengage. Without that. So they don't have the Aphelios to try and help, and his weapons aren't exactly the greatest for taking down the Baron, but it's down to 5k anyway, as Fake is going to Realm Warp his way in. That's the hook that's going to connect onto Carrier, who immediately explodes. Keen gets himself his first reset as Gumi Yushi in a bit of trouble. Keen just gets himself back when things get a little bit too worrying. Buster shot to get rid of the Mega Nar. Keen honestly just won that by himself and that was so sick. I mean, Keen is winning this game by himself in every regard. <laughs> he's 2-0-2, two, two, but he's got his three items. 
gets the explosive damage done there to blow up just one single target. Once carry is out, it's a 5 All right, and now, now he's teleport flanking on the Tristana. Here we this go. This kind of cool. They get themselves some vision. Kana taking a bit of damage here. Is the rocket jump effectively? Uh, offensively, sorry, as Fake is just dead. Leo's going to be able to lock down that kill. Another great hook to come through from Lahens. I mean, he can lock players down, and we have seen that, but it's really just the burst damage that's the biggest problem here. All right, Ona. Now's your opportunity. He does have the ult. He can get himself into this pit as Dread's going down very, very low. Kana, decent Naba, but he is able to get that little fadeaway jump shot, like it, with the boomerang. And a freak could deem it too dangerous to go for the Baron. So once again, we have a bit of a stalemate. Yeah. They just need to make sure that they don't let T1 get away with taking this too quickly. They're going to keep some vision over here. Fly's going to stay. T1 are going to try to race this down, but there is vision. So if we can know about this, they, but can they get back in time? That's the question. Yeah, they're going to try and burst this one down. They're really we're playing tag with the Baron right here as it's down to 6k. Fly moves on in there. Let's see whether he can actually kill anyone. Looks like the answer is going to be no, as T1 will be able to get the Baron. Now can they escape? And the answer is absolutely yes, they can. As the ult comes out from Ona, he's going to play it safe. Well, Kana does have that hop available. He can get over that wall. They do spot out that Afrika are doing the Baron. As Fly getting himself out of the way. That was a fake flash as the Baron's down extraordinarily low. Ona is inside the pit. He goes into stasis. He can't smite there, but he is able to smite immediately after getting out as Kana gets to Meganar at exactly the right time. The Shakrams were doing so much work. They sacrificed the bear, but T1 gets their second Baron. Highway robbery here for T1. And now they're going to go oh and rush down this, this uh, uh, Ocean Drake or Ocean Soul Point. That's ridiculous. They were robbing one bank oh, no, no, and they teleported that. to the next really bank. Really unfortunate there because that's going to be so huge. Like if a freaking gets Baron, they might be able to get multiple inhibitors here as we watch this happen go in on. real time. Back, 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 back. He's like, I got it. Get, get out, get out, get out, get out. Back, 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 back. Get, get out. Back, back. Leave, leave, leave. <laughs> Going for this long wrap around onto Faker. Flies here. Can they grab him? They find a lot of damage there as Kane. He can rocket jump over. He's, He's going to do it. so. Absolutely. And boom goes Faker. Immediately, the rest of T1 are going to back away. And that is so much time and space. Bought. Okay. Now they need to try and siege in onto this turret. That's where things get a little bit more difficult, right? Keen's level 18, so of course he does a lot of long-range damage. That's Chains of Corruption connecting onto Dread, but he takes a lantern to get himself to safety. A lot of poke damage raining on through here as now Ona's thinking about his opportunity, whether or not he has it. The hook is going to deter him for the moment as the Moonlight Vigil comes down, but doesn't do a whole lot of work. Kana's not going to get anything out of the Snar. That's really unfortunate. Once again, he's just going to be struggling to have this insane engage tool at the right moment because he's just so stuck under this turret. So defensively. Yeah, he's going to have to keep throwing these boomerangs through as Leo's taking a fair bit of damage there. Has Severum, of course, is okay. The ulti out from Ona is now. Faker. Faker's trying to trade it with Keen. He does have the GA, remember, but Faker doesn't, and he's just going to explode. Kana going to follow suit. The damage from a Freaker is just gigantic with the poke. Is starting to rain down. Goodbye, Fly. He just immediately evaporates. Kana now has that Meganar almost back available, but he doesn't have a Volley Bear. He doesn't have a team. Yeah, a Freaker doesn't. They don't need a team. They just need Keen, right? Can they actually get some minions to get underneath this turret, though? Because, the answer is yes. Oh, my goodness. This is so dangerous. Gumiyushi, he needs to land poke, but I just don't know whether they can stop Keen from tearing these turrets apart. The autos are so scary. Flashes forward. The Varus explodes. Kana's dead as well. And Wolf, we are going to game number three. 43 minutes in. Yeah, but thankfully, uh, it did come towards the top side and stopped that one from being a reality. Keen. Is he going to try to stop this? No, it will be Dread who does that. He sees it immediately. He's like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to use some mist pretty effectively, but it's not actually going to do anything. That's first blood so easily. Uh, look, look pretty crazy. This is really hard for T1 to win if there's a group up. But they catch Fly. That's more than half of his health bar gone here. So maybe this is actually doable now because Owner has done so much damage to the Herald oh, already. Faker going to flash before Dread's able to get that kick through as uh, in goes Fly once more, but now doesn't have the distortion. Fine the mimicked version as now fly with that uh, fake version of himself he's able to get himself out of the way Leo's here and in position as Shelly is going to reset Kana who's moved on over it's gonna be okay Keen's at full health though and he is a giant Let's see what they can actually do the culling is available Severum uh, sorry the 
Uh, Crescendum and the Calibrum are up here for Leo, so we can do a lot of long-range damage. Cannon now trying to get Snippy, and they landed onto the hands. The Super Mega Death Hunter comes through, and the ulti from Leo is not going to land. T1, they group up and get the job done. Gumiushi with the double. In they understand that they need to be as secretive as possible as Carrier doesn't put up the door. And now Dread finds his way in, finds the Q. He wanted the kick. Flashes for it, as you can see, Keen gets exhausted. Dread safeguards to get on top of the Lucian. And now the rest of Afrika, they dive in on top of Ono. They're able to grab that kill. Dread very close to falling down, and they save. Yeah, this is extremely greedy from Afrika. The unseen Lucian is the deadliest, as Fake is going to rotate up. Dread's going to find him. There's the kick flash. Actually avoids the piercing light damage, so slightly unfortunate there as Carrier gets in there, and they immediately get rid of Dread. Fake is going to be okay for a little while, but the Moonlight Vigil will be out. To lock these him team fights happening. We want to utilize that range advantage as Dread coming on up here. Is there's a blast cone and uh, okay, Kane and Dread are going to be absolutely fine. Relentless Pursuit is going to get uh, Kane to safety and T1 unable to get on top of them. Yeah, just one old traded for two here for Afrika gets himself out of the way. The arc that's set up here for Afrika is really nice because they can not only you know threaten to collapse him, but they can also just rotate over the Baron if T1 do commit. And that's exactly where they're headed right now. Look at. This After one game ward. number two, Afrika just hate Mount, uh, hate Cloud Drakes. They do not want to take <laughs> yeah. them. They lost the game because of it last time. They're not doing it ever again. Is that Afrika one war is a unit trying to get over here. The Drake is taken by Faker, but he's got Realm Warp. He's got Teleport. He's got a lot of ways that he can get through. Is Kane gonna get snipped? He's stuck inside, but he's still able to click the lantern. Snips come forward. They do manage to take down the Lucian, and then immediately Kana goes golden. But look at this Aphelios damage. He's doing a lot of work. You saw Ona threw down the Subjugate. That was onto Leo, so that's gonna get him some health back. But they do manage to make their way out of there as Afrika. Fly off to the side, it's going to get slowed down, but will be able to keep himself up for the moment. I mean, just that one kill on the Lucian gives so much pushing power to T1. They want this inhibitor. They're going to get the turret at least here. They know Fly and Dreader on the flank, but I don't think it's going to be enough to stop them. This should be the inhibitor going down. Yeah, Lance has now put the uh, Lantern on cooldown as well. They do manage to get the inhibitor. Fly looking for an opportunity to get in. The mist does go. A lot of things just appear in that pit as uh, Dread is going to get the kickback onto Faker. Now we've got a teleport to come through. Let's see whether they can actually get this. He does have the Zonyas complete as Fly gets out. But Keen, he's not going to be so lucky. He's stuck in in there. Super Mega Death Rocket finishes off the kill as Realm Warp is going to come through as well. That's going to bring Gumiyushi over. I was and, like, some, oh. sunk, some sunk cost fallacy here for Afrika Atlas, I yeah, think. Yeah, right. They were like, well, we waited this long. We might as well just all in on Faker, and his Zonias just outlast literally everything. Allows T1 to punish. Now they have a man advantage for this Baron. Well, Hook is going to connect there onto Carrier, but of course Carrier is okay with being hooked. That's a great rune prison onto Fly. He's denied the exit, but the uh, it's not going to be enough to get them out of the way. The vision goes down for Carrier's T1. back. He's not. It's no longer a five v four. He's here. Yep. The box comes in. Okay, so they have vision. Can they actually get in there, though, is the question. Is that Realm Warp was not exactly where I was expecting it to be, but it might just be the end of the of La Hens, as it is going to be a trade of supports, but Keen's already dead. Leo has a whole lot of survivability, but just not enough. And, and this pick, you know, the Trundle pick, it, it's, it's working out very well at denying Dread from doing a whole lot in this late game. You know, he's yeah. just always under threat, and if he gets slowed or caught by a pillar, he just dies or has to use all of his cooldowns and he's not useful for when T1 continue to push. The positioning from owner has been really good in these splits here. No, it's been fantastic. Look it's at all the wards that if we have to commit. Okay, that's a hook on to carry. He's going to die immediately. Fly tries to get in there. Gumiushi down to below half. And if I can't shake the feeling that maybe there's just going to be that flip as Dread. Okay, he's going to be able to take the lantern out. Fly gets towards the side, but he has distortion to get himself out of the way. Fishing now with these pillars is Kana. Diving forward, looking for a little bit more. You can see Leo getting dove on. Great kickback onto Kana, but the look at the damage. Faker finally able to get in there. Immediately pops to Dread. Now trying to get out of the way, and it's Gumiyushi's turn to get the hard carry happening. This is going to be the ace, and T1 will just be able to march down the mid lane and finish off this game. Oh, what a great end to this game for T1. <laughs> Soar's a little wide. But fly. The super mega almost rocket. Press the attacks on him. Is he going to get out of here? Yeah. Looks like the answer is yes. He actually can go back too if he wants to. But the Nexus is going to go down. Yeah, team one.